This first presentation is titled Student Life Cycle or Successful Life Cycle of a Student, Prospect to Graduate. So I would like to welcome Leah Igo, Haley Kinsella, Ali Legier, Lisa Shaker, and Holland Wegner up to the stage. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am Alexandra Legier. This is Holland Wagner. We're with the enrollment team. My name is Leah Igo. I'm on the marketing team. My name is Lisa Shaker, and I am on the support team. And I'm Haley Kinsella, and I'm also on the student support team. Uh, so today we are going to present an overview of what each of our teams do um, and how, with this in mind, look at a specific case study of a recent graduate and how each team has worked with this graduate um, and what we have learned and what we have improved based on our experiences. Uh, so today we are going to present an overview of what each of our teams does um, and with this in mind then look at a specific case study of a recent graduate and uh, how each of our teams has worked with a specific graduate and what we've learned and what we've improved based on uh, their experiences and our experiences. So to kick it off, marketing. Alrighty, so from a marketing perspective, um, some of our main objectives are to drive brand awareness from both a program and a college-wide perspective. Um, we are also responsible for lead generation or generating interest in our various program offerings. Um, we also work to create a sense of community for our online students using various marketing tactics and strategies. Um, so utilizing some of the key components on the screen, marketing is able to drive lead generation and brand engagement through a diversified and targeted marketing plan. Through customer profiling, we can develop a content strategy and use strategic placement to target our preferred audience as they move through all stages of the marketing funnel. Okay, so as enrollment counselors here, we work with prospective students and help them complete and submit a strong application here at UNE and help prepare them for a successful start in their respective graduate program. Uh, we're really their first point of contact and in a lot of ways the face or voice, if you will, of the university. Uh, we're program experts in the respective programs that we represent and are responsible for knowing the, the ins and outs of the field, really. Um, career outcomes, salary potential, employment demand, list really goes on and on. And we work very closely with our program teams and try and learn enough about the program to be able to speak proficiently and confidently to those who typically already work in the field or have more of a background than we do in it. It's our responsibility to qualify prospects, make sure that the program is really a good fit for them, and that they meet the basic requirements for each program, typically being minimum GPA requirement, uh, prerequisite coursework related to the field of study, and we ensure that they hold a conferred bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited institution or international equivalent. We have a communication plan in place that really varies based on where they're at in the process. So whether they're a prospect who's requested information that we haven't yet made contact with, uh, a recruit who we've made contact with and are actively working with um, in hopes that they'll apply, or of course an applicant who's already begun the application process helping them work through that application. We build relationships, uh, we offer advice, guidance, and provide information to help paint a picture of what it's like to be an online student here at UNE. We are also responsible for selling our respective programs, um, overcoming objectives and objections, and in general, really do everything in our power to increase enrollment numbers for the college. We know that the programs and experience that UNE Online offers is better than that of our competitors and we're really here to tell you about that. Um, we attend events and conferences locally and across the country in an effort to recruit prospective students, as well as get UNA's name out there and establish ourselves as a leader in online education. Um, online learning is really an extremely competitive um, market, as we all know, and I can't really emphasize that enough. We're naturally not always going to be a student's first choice here. So it's really our responsibility to provide them with all the information that they need um, to make an informed decision while trying to steer them in a direction that really highlights the strengths 
um, of our respective programs and the college and experience as a whole. We're power users of Salesforce, and our, it's our responsibility to protect the integrity of the CRM um, data for use by both our team and other departments within the college. And once a student has been accepted, uh, we work to make as smooth and seamless a transition as possible to their assigned student support specialist as they near the start of their program. And they're here to tell you a little bit more about their roles as well. Okay, so once a student is accepted into a program, they are assigned a dedicated student support specialist who becomes their main point of contact throughout the duration of their time as a student. We are here to answer any questions related to being a student at UNE. So a little bit about our role. Uh, student support specialists are program experts. We inform students of their degree requirements and ensure students are meeting their requirements to successfully complete their degree. We are relationship builders. We are the face of the university for the student. When students think of UNE, we want them to think of their student support specialist. Our goal is to be that warm, welcoming personality. We are liaisons and advocates. We are the first point of contact for all student interactions with the university, and as such, we act as liaisons with other units to ensure the students receive the services that they need. The student is not here physically to advocate for him or herself. Therefore, there are many situations where the student support specialist will advocate on their behalf. We are advisors and mentors. As I've already covered, the student support specialists are the program experts and we know what courses students need to take. Therefore, we help students build their course plan. We can also mentor students on time management, instructor communication, and so forth. It's important to note we are not advising on mentor, we're not advising or mentoring on academic content. We are program experts, we're not content experts. We monitor student progress in courses because a sudden stop or dip in progress is a red flag that something could be wrong. Just like attendance or poor performance in a face-to-face -face class would be a red flag. We also assess completion risk for students and those students that we identify as high risk receive more touch points. And lastly, we are collaborators. We know the student experience, so we collaborate with other units to make improvements. The life cycle. So once a student is assigned their student support specialist, the first step is to have the new student conversation. The new student conversation is an opportunity for us to get to know the student better in order to best support them. We review program requirements, their course plan, and we ensure students are prepared and have the tools they need to get started in their program. Once in their program, our goal is to contact our students via every via phone every eight week course to check in, ask if they have any questions and remind them of any upcoming deadlines. For example, registration or applying to graduate. We want to build relationships with students in good times so that they know to reach out to us if they're going through a tough time or they just need help. As students continue in the program, as I mentioned earlier, we monitor student progress to ensure they're staying on track and meeting their degree requirements, and we provide resources if needed. We really wanna help students overcome any barriers that could hinder their success. We notify students of registration deadlines, course offerings, and advise them on what to register for each semester. We also keep an eye out for registration errors by reviewing course rosters and notify students of any changes that need to be made. And lastly, graduation, it is the most exciting times for students, but it's also the most exciting time for student support specialists. We ensure students have met degree requirements and apply to graduate, which is required for degree conferral. We also send students commencement information and we can assist students as they plan their trip to Maine. Commencement really is the most special, rewarding, and fun time of the year for us in student support. Uh, so, with all of that in mind, uh, we would like to introduce you at this point to Gloria. Uh, she is a re recent graduate uh, who's a great example of how all of our teams have worked together to help her uh, you know, have the best possible experience as a student, as a UNE Online student. All righty, so from a marketing perspective, um, UNE first interacted with Gloria via an AdWords campaign. So. Gloria used Google to search for information which we had keyed for via our keyword and content strategy. So Gloria was then shown an ad for our program, which she clicked on and which directed her to one of our landing pages. On the landing page, Gloria then completed um, a form asking for some basic information in exchange for one of our downloadable, downloadable program brochures. The information then that was derived from this form fill syncs to our CRM system or Salesforce, 
which then creates a new prospect record um, and automatically assigns the new prospect to a dedicated enrollment counselor. So in addition to receiving direct outreach from um, Gloria's assigned enrollment counselor, um, Gloria is also enrolled in our lead nurturing or email automation, which works to supplement the enrollment team's communication efforts. Gloria then became an applicant, um, was assisted by enrollment, and then converted and was accepted and became a student. Um, marketing was also able to provide further opportunity for Gloria to connect with the greater UNI online community, which we'll share um, later on in the presentation. So I was the enrollment counselor for Gloria, and I first spoke to her as a prospective student uh, for the Masters of Public Health program in the spring of 2015. Uh, generally, as an enrollment counselor, we expect the timeline we're working with a highly interested student, which she was, uh, prospect, um, to go from first, you know, first contact, uh, new prospect, to accepted student, ideally in about one to two months. Um, Gloria is a great example of how our communication with a prospect can extend well beyond this average. Uh, some unique factors for Gloria, she came in uh, to us while we were using our old CRM, which was the Sugar CRM database, um, and then transitioned uh, to the Salesforce, which was behind the scenes for her, she wasn't seeing this, but it was very interesting uh, to be able to compare and see a broader picture of Gloria and her interests. Um, that Salesforce was able to provide for us moving forward. Uh, she became an applicant for the summer 2015 term. Uh, however, we were not able to finish her application by the deadline due to the amount of time it took for us to receive a hard copy of her international transcript evaluation as she was an international student. Um, Luckily, we were able to receive that hard copy for the fall 2015 deadline for, to which she was accepted. Um, however, she then did choose to defer her acceptance to uh, the spring 2016 term in order to have a longer time period to arrange her finance, finances and online accounts, which she had a, a little bit of difficulties with due to communication challenges. You know, as I said, she was an international student. There was uh, some difficulty sometimes uh, reaching her via phone, so majority of her, actually I think all of her communication was done via email, as well as the time zone conflicts, um, which I know uh, Haley will get into a little bit later. Um, and it was just easier for her to make sure that everything was in a row and she wasn't rushed to start for the fall 2015 and then move on to spring. So we, we finally got her started for spring 2016. Um, uh, and then she's also a great example of an applicant that needed a lot of cross-departmental collaboration. Uh, so as I mentioned, she did have some financial um, issues she needed clarifications on. So as an enrollment counselor, not only was I advising her to reach out directly, it was actually more helpful for myself to also reach out to financial services and try to ease any communication um, confusion uh, that she may be having. That also helped with uh, some UNE online accounts. She was having difficulty getting into her on online accounts, so I worked directly with IT to confirm her needs as well. Uh, and then the student support transition was also a little bit longer um, than average as she had an established relationship with me at this point. Um, so it took some time to fully transition over to Haley. Um, so overall, as an enrollment counselor, I worked directly with her for about six to seven months. Uh, and during that time, I worked to keep her involved with the UNE community through ongoing enrollment outreach from myself directly, but also some ongoing marketing initiatives. Alrighty, so as I mentioned, um, marketing provides additional opportunities for prospects to engage and learn more about the college and their program of interest um, as a way to supplement enrollment um, efforts. So some of these opportunities can include webinars, blog posts, as well as Facebook Live. Um, we first identified Facebook Live as an opportunity to create sort of a virtual open house or a real-time environment for prospects to be able to ask questions, engage, and get a sense of the community at UNE Online. Um, we were able to identify Facebook Live when it became sort of an emerging social tool, which allowed us to use the medium as a way to overcome the lack of opportunity to host a traditional open house. 
Um, Gloria interacted with our most recent Facebook Live, which was titled In-Demand Skills, Matching Graduate-Level Skills with Employer Needs. Um, she viewed the Facebook Live and then visited a landing page that we had created specifically for this Facebook Live session and then was able to download an infographic designed to supplement the, the Facebook Live session. Um, so our research and strategy team was able to share insights in, into how our program offerings align with labor market demands and trends. Uh, as I touched upon, you know, with my specific interactions with Gloria, um, I did want to highlight some other processes that have evolved since then for the enrollment team. Um, though we can't go back in time, I do believe that if we had had these procedures in place, uh, perhaps we could have been able to assist her in starting in one of the earlier terms that she had applied for. Um, I mentioned earlier the CRM updates, uh, Sugar to Salesforce, uh, and then Tahita, which is for higher education in Salesforce, was a, it has given us a greater overall picture of our prospects, our applicants, um, and students, and a better idea of their broader goals and qualifications. Um, another change that we have made since Gloria came through is we implemented the online application portal, which has streamlined the application process for all of our applicants, hopefully making it easier for them to complete. Uh, and then also, uh, electronic transcript evaluations. We've reached out to a number of the organizations that we accept these evaluations from and have set up online digital um, options to receive the evaluations so we're better able to track them and see when they're done and then download immediately so we don't have to wait for that hard copy uh, to come in the mail, which can take some time. I think. Yeah, um, those are all great points uh, in addition to some of the improvements that Ali noted, we've streamlined some of our interdepartmental procedures by working with uh, both graduate and undergraduate admissions to create a shared folder that we can all access with incoming transcripts to try and improve our, our efficiency here. Um, we've adapted our communication plans to be more proactive with different prospects, um, updated our communication strategy, our non-matriculated process for those seeking just to take in uh, an individual course rather than enroll in a degree or a certificate program here. And we've taken part in several uh, sales training exercises to improve our individual approaches with prospective students. We continue to work very closely with student support um, to help make the transition from applicant to student run smoothly, uh, reduce confusion, and really ensure that they're well prepared to start on their first day of courses. Um, and with that, I'll turn back over to student support. Yes, yeah, so I was Gloria's student support specialist. Um, so one awesome thing that we uh, really love about working so closely together with enrollment counselors is being able to have kind of a heads up about student situations um, when they are transitioned to us. So as Ali had mentioned previously, when Gloria first started in the program, she was very eager um, to get started with her new student conversation. And so the new student conversation is the part of the onboarding process uh, where the student and the student support specialist get together to go over their next steps and learn what to expect as they get started in their new program. Um, because of the time difference, and she was six hours ahead of us, it was very difficult for us to find a time to chat, so most of our communication happened via email. This actually worked out for Gloria, and this was her preferred form of communication. So we worked together to go over orientation, registration, and discuss any concerns that she had as she started her first term. Gloria was very eager to become part of the UNE community, and all students receive a welcome package with a student ID and a gift, but due to some postal service issues to Nigeria, take, um, took a lot longer than expected, I was able to work with our security office to send Gloria a digital copy of her student ID card. She really wanted this right away so she could show her employer that she was enrolled at UNE and she was very proud of that. Um, so over the course of her first couple of terms, Gloria experienced some issues with paying her tuition and due to some strict rules in place through Nigeria, her home country, um, regarding sending funds to the US, we had to work with her in our billing department at UNE to create a special schedule for her to send money transfers to UNE. Um, so the student accounts department, along with myself, worked to create a customized plan for Gloria to be able to send her tuition on her terms. So this extremely frustrating situation for her was eased by collaboration from UNE staff. 
Um, and Gloria was in, consistently involved in the UNE community throughout her two and a half years in the program, and you'll see a little bit more about that in the next slides. Um, yes, yeah, so as I mentioned before, um, marketing also um, provides an opportunity for online students to connect and we try to use different strategies and tactics to create um, a sense of community for those online students. Um, one of those initiatives was titled the My UNE Online Classroom, um, which was an initiative designed to accomplish sort of three objectives, which is increase user-generated content. Um, we asked students to share photos of what their UNE online classroom looks like. Um, we also wanted to emphasize to our greater community the idea that it's possible um, to learn and study from anywhere. And we also wanted to be able to facilitate and foster connections between students who may not have been aware that they had fellow classmates nearby or with similar interests. So Gloria was actually our first student to submit a photo for this particular campaign, which was really awesome because we were able to share um, you know, that we have a wonderful, engaged student all the way in Nigeria. Um, in addition to participating in the My UNE Online Classroom Initiative, um, Gloria was an avid reader of GPPH News, which is the Graduate Programs in Public Health newsletter, um, which is sent on a monthly basis to our GPPH students and faculty um, with the intention of providing updates on the public health community as well as what we're up to here at UNE Online. Uh, the marketing platform that we use provides us with reporting, um, email reporting on opens and clicks of our email automation so we're able to track and improve on our performance. Um, some of the topics that are included in the GPPH news include student, alumni, staff, and faculty spotlights, um, as well as public health opportunities for faculty and students, career services specifically for our public health students, public health alumni employment information, commencement information, and more. And here we are at graduation. So as Lisa mentioned earlier, graduation is the most exciting time for students and the UNE staff that help students through their journey. Um, so students come to UNE to celebrate their accomplishments and student support specialist gets to meet students that they have developed relationships with over the years. So here's a photo of Gloria and myself. And Gloria traveled to Maine from Nigeria for the 2018 commencement weekend. Um, and it was a very exciting and memorable experience for her, as well as myself. Um, and lastly, to close out the, the feedback loop, um, marketing assists research and strategy to deploy student satisfaction surveys um, via our email marketing platform. Gloria interacted with this survey and provided feedback which works to improve courses for our next iteration. Um, and Elena from the research and strategy team is presenting on labor market insights this afternoon at 320 and she can provide more information on what exactly their team does. Uh, to close, I hope this has given you a sense of a path that a student can take from first interest to graduation and beyond, and the number of people it actually takes to provide a successful experience for each student. Um, at this time, if anyone has any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. So the question was, how long was Gloria a member of the UNE community from the moment she applied to graduating? So she just graduated um, technically in August of 2018, so just about two months ago. And I believe she was a prospect starting in 2015, April. in about April. April 2015, um, so. A little over three little years. years. And I think you still actually have contact with her as yes. well. Yes, yep, so I actually, not, she actually emailed me last week. So um, she's consistently in, involved in the UNI community still and is utilizing me as a resource throughout her uh, career now as an alumni of UNI, so it's really great.